What's happening, guys? Welcome back for another week of the narrative. Noah hit that intro. This week's narrative draft capital is king. And, you know, I think, I don't think anyone in their right mind is going to argue that draft capital matters. It is absolutely one of the most important things because more often than not, it leads to opportunity, right? But for me and for guys like Noah, and I think in my opinion, for guys like with common sense that can take in new information, draft capital shouldn't be all that matters. And it feels like when it comes to James Robinson, guys like James Robinson, you know, not just James Robinson, but guys like James Robinson, there is no argument against them now other than draft capital. And that's like literally the only thing that anyone that does not want James Robinson can hang their hat on and say like, look, there's a lot of risk because he's an undrafted free agent, right? But to me, I talked about this in the Mark Watch Mondays. The reason why draft capital matters is it matters a lot before you step on the field because that's what leads you to stepping on the field. That's what leads you to being retaining that job, right? But once you stepped on the field, it like it like starts degrading a bit in terms of its in terms of its importance, right? Guys like Terry McLaurin is a third round pick, right? Guys like Michael Thomas was not a first round pick. Like once you've proven it on the field, that's what matters most. And James Robinson has proven it more than probably most running backs ever. Like he is in he is on he is in historic company in terms of what he's been able to do when he's on the field. And he has been this is I'm gonna say one of the greatest, if not the greatest at least top five, top 10 lock greatest rookie running back seasons of all time. Not just for undrafted free agents, for everybody, right? What he's been able to do uh, in this so far this year. So if you're still locked on to draft capital, I think you really need to step back and think about all things he's done. Like people look at undrafted free, cap, undrafted free agent hit rates, right? It's like, well, undrafted free agents have a hit rate, have a really, really low hit rate in the NFL. And that's totally true. But the denominator what they're looking at is like all undrafted free agents that made it in the NFL. But James Robinson has cleared multiple gates. First, he got signed on the team, right? That's number one. Two, the starter got cut in favor of him for the coaching staff. That's, that's gate number two. On a cheap gate contract, too. Who they spend a top four pick yeah. on. Yeah. Gate number three was him stepping on the field and actually performing well, right? That's gate number three. So gate number four is him being on the field for multiple weeks, having longevity in terms of his production and producing at an elite level in the NFL. So he's cleared all these gates, right? So we can no longer compare him to other undrafted free agents. That is not the right comparison. We need to compare him to other successes that have had this type of production in the field. And that's, that's like really my view on James Robinson is you, you cannot compare him to undrafted free agents to hit rates anymore because it's just not, it's just not apples to apples anymore. You know what this is like, Mike, when we talked about touchdown regression last year, and when you compare somebody to the mean or the average, right? When you compare Aaron Jones's touchdown rate to the mean of everybody in the NFL, you're obviously not going to be right because in that mean are guys like Alfred Blue, who stink at football. In this pool of undrafted free agents, I'm not going to name them because I don't keep a, a tab of every single undrafted free agent ever in my head. But as you're saying, right, he's going down a path of somebody like Arian Foster, who goes out, produces, and sure, you can compare him to Philip Lindsay if you want. The difference is Philip Lindsay is not the size of a workhorse back. Despite him being really good as a, as a rookie in the league, he was not a workhorse back because Royce Freeman was still there. He is not a good pass catcher. All he is is a breakaway guy. James Robinson, to this point, as you said, he, he beat out a former fourth overall pick. He has beaten out Chris Thompson, who is a world-renowned pass catching back by Jay Gruden, who is the coach of this team. He has made him completely useless. They had Divina Zigbo. He got hurt or whatever. They didn't rush him back. Their offense, they're not expecting to win. They've run through three different quarterbacks to this point. Their offensive line isn't fantastic. He's still producing. What leads you to believe he's going to be replaced next year? They're going to be the number one or number two overall pick. They're going to get Justin Fields, which also means they're going to be the second pick in the second round. You think that that team, with all the holes that they have defensively, the offensive line, they want to add a few other weapons, you think they're going to add the second pick of this, the second pick of the second round on an ETN, on a Najee Harris? Those are the only guys, and maybe Javante Williams, that are in this class that can push him for a job. Third round, you think they're going to try to add a running back? Sure, maybe they do. Is he going to push a running back who is, what, third in the NFL in yards from scrimmage to this point, who is scoring at will, who is running over whatever defense is in front of him? He, it makes, from a structural standpoint of this team, it makes no sense. And from just a common sense standpoint, it makes no sense because he's extremely cheap. He's extremely good. 
and that's that's all you got to think about, right? The team doesn't have to pay him a whole lot, and he's yep. produced way more than with the money that they're paying him. So I think it's kind of straightforward. We've seen other undrafted free agents like Aaron Foster produce. We're seeing right now Raheem Moster. You know, Tevin Coleman was Kyle Shanahan's love child. He's been pushed to the wayside because, one, he's always hurt. Number two, Raheem Moster, despite being like 28 years old undrafted, he's really good at football. They're going to keep him on the field. Austin Eckler got paid the bag after being undrafted because he's really good and he can be used in all three – uh, on all three downs so I don't see any reason for him to lose his job and if you're worried about that then somebody in your league is going to capitalize real on a really good running back at a really cheap price in one of my leagues I just traded away uh, Robert Woods and Joe Mixon for James Robinson and Stefan Diggs and it might Love sound that. a little crazy yeah but like to me Stefan Diggs is a top 12 dynasty wide receiver and James Robinson I haven't updated my rankings he is pushing into that RB1 conversation because although it's crazy to put an undrafted free agent that high, what give me the reasons to not do so other than he was drafted. He wasn't drafted at all. I was going to say he was drafted late. He wasn't drafted at all. But a year into the NFL, who do you think deserved to be drafted or drafted higher, Jonathan Taylor or James Robinson? Like it just, it makes sense. He's good at football. And to this point, he's been better than basically every other rookie running back. Yep. And they're, it's looking like they're going to get Justin Fields next year. And that's put Justin Fields, a mobile quarterback with James Robinson. It's going to be a match made in heaven. And it's going to be Dobbins' junior season, just carbon copy that into the Jaguars offense. Yeah, it's it's going to be, it's going to be lights out. So the re look, the reason why you can get him for the reason for the price you can get him is because he does not have draft capital. And don't get me wrong. That does represent very real risk, right? If he was a second round pick, I would feel way more comfortable, but that is a bet and a risk you should be willing to make because if it pans out and he does turn into an Aaron Foster, right? You won your league. That, that is, this is a league winning maneuver. If you pay up that first, you pay up that first plus a second, that first plus a wide receiver, whatever it is, it can come to bite you in the ass, but the reward is so much greater. And that reward is what I talked about. It's like imbalanced risk and reward. The risk is there. It's definitely there. Don't get me wrong. We're not telling you there's no risk here, but the reward completely outweighs it because if you hit if you hit on an Arian foster it completely changes the dynamic of your dynasty league and that's those are the types of bets that you really need to make because if you hit on like you know you hit on like someone even as great as justin jefferson that's not going to change the outlook of your team like believe it or not it's going to give you a lot of great value and he don't get me wrong he's a top five dynasty wide receiver for me but in terms of weekly winning potential he does not bring you the same upside that someone like James Robinson does. Because he's a wide James receiver. Robinson is a top five running back right now in a completely terrible, terrible yeah, situation. Terrible. terrible. He has every, like people complain about Zeke's situation. Dude, James Robinson is on one of the worst teams in the NFL. Doesn't even have a quarterback. Their old line's like, whatever. It doesn't matter. He's like, feed me. I'll put you guys on my back. Let's keep, let's keep going. So once they get a better offense, better offensive weapons, they just fire their GM. You think that new GM's going to come in and make the same mistake of drafting a running back high as the prior GM? I don't think so. So I think like if I were a betting man, I would say like 60 to 40, I would lay 60 to 40 odds, which is pretty damn good odds for betting. If you don't understand betting, I would lay 60 to 40 odds that James Robinson is the starting workhorse running back next year. And what, those, what do you I mean, say about Miles Gaskin? Though? I think Miles Gaskin ooh. has a much higher yeah. percentage chance of him losing his job than Robinson, just because I feel look, Robinson has been great on the touches he's given. Miles Gaskin has been, mediocre and I feel like that team is a lot more complete than the Jaguars to the point where I wouldn't be surprised if they add another piece to that backfield I know that they've used a basically a workhorse back whenever they've had one running back out there this year I just think that Miles Gaskin compared to James Robinson the talent isn't anywhere close and I think he's kind of more of a jag you know even though James Robinson's on the jags I think Miles Gaskin's more of a jag and I think his opportunity to start next year and be a workhorse back is a whole hell of a lot worse than James Robinson but I still I don't know. I still think it's up in the air that he, he could potentially be the lead back there. I'd have to look at the cap situation, their draft picks, but um, just comparing the two, how do you feel about Miles Gaskin next I, year? I really like Miles Gaskin too. Again, the risk is 100% there that he gets replaced because Miami Dolphins have a boatload of picks. And now that they've like kind of built up an offensive line, got a quarterback, I still think they have a ton of other holes they need to fill first. But, you know, them taking like a day two, third round running back seems like more realistic. But again, the risk reward is there. Like he's very cheap. You can acquire Miles Gaskins for a second rounder easily, in my opinion. Um, you could probably even get a little piece back for him. And again, if he hits, he's not going to be a top five running back, 
but he's going to give you like a mid round, like a middling RB two with like RB one weekly upside with a ton of volume. Great for flex plays, great for a deep, deeper dynasty league. So I actually really like Miles, Miles Gaxon as well. Cause I actually don't think he's a Jack. I think he's been pretty good. Um, given, given what he's, what he's like been, been, been handed. So I actually really Basically, like, I like Dave both Montgomery at the price of Terry yeah. Cohen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Both of them super like, James Robinson undrafted. Miles Jackson, I think, was a late round pick, right? I think he was undrafted as well. Oh, was he undrafted as well? Yeah. So again, just like the the reason why you get him so cheap is draft capital. And these two teams, the Dolphins in particular, have shown us when everyone thought they're going to draft Swift, when everyone thought they're going to draft Dobbins, like what do they do? They faded that position entirely. And I think they are under. They understand that the value of the running back is not that high. And if they come came from New England, which he did, um, like they understand the value of the running back is not that high. And, but the good thing is, unlike New England, he's willing to bank on a workhorse running back. So I, I really liked Miles Gaston as well. Yeah, uh, I lied. He was the 20th pick of the seventh round. So okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, he was a late-round pick. Yeah. Fucker. Trying to make me doubt myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, draft capital doesn't matter, Mike. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all we got for you guys this week's narrative. Again, don't take this. Oh, I actually had someone tw- DM me and say, like, uh, please stop taking James Robinson victory laps. One, I respond to him and said, I'm sorry. I don't know if I can do that. But two, these aren't James Robinson victory laps. These are James Robinson celebrations. We want to celebrate the success of players like this. I understand it's a game of fantasy. It's a game of numbers. But, like, these are real guys. This guy is living out his fucking dream. He is one. He, he can't overcame all odds. Miles Gaskins, too. Both the guys overcame all odds. Everyone doubted them. And what do they do? They're just balling out in the NFL. And I just, I personally, I love to see it. Everyone loves a good underdog story. So we're just, we're celebrating James Robinson. And I mean, like victory laps are just observations. Like, hey, yeah, this guy's really good. Yeah. And we're just trying to tell you guys, like, if there's, there are those of you out there who are viewers who still are not bought into James Robinson, I, I, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, please just take off the blindfold. Just like mute all the draft capital drones you're following on Twitter. Just mute all of them and just, just take the plunge. Take the plunge. You will not regret it. All right, that's all we got for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed, hit that thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, follow Noah, follow me, follow Nick on Twitter, engage with us, uh, shout out, you know, talk shit, you know, just, you know, bring up the pain. Every time you hear a Chargers uh, news, just tag Noah in there. Uh, make sure you get him. I, I, I shout out the picture in one of my tweets. Look at one of my tweets. He's got a great, great Noah photo for those <laughs> moments. Make sure you guys just tag him. I look like tag Squidward him. in that picture. <laughs> tag him like you tag Nick for the Falcons and like you tag me for Patriots pain. So tag us, man. Just shout out to us, uh, holler back, and uh, we'll, we'll always try and get, get back to you guys whenever we can. So that's all we got. Tune in. Uh,